Today's episode of Everyday Homeschool is a little bit different. I am going to give you access to the first couple videos. I'm actually just going to reteach them right now uh, for you of my homeschool planning and vision course. This homeschool planning and vision course I recorded last year and have put the finishing touches on it. I'm so excited to make it available to you. It's all about planning a peaceful, proactive, and flexible homeschooling year. Um, today, I'm going to do my best. I have some slides, and so actually this episode will also be on YouTube. If you're visual and you want to see the slides, I'll also put them in my show notes just as pictures uh, for the episode. So those are at musicalmemory.com slash podcast. But um, I'm going to walk through how I plan all my kids' core curriculum and the kind of background mindset and vision casting that I do early on in my planning. So I hope this is really helpful to you. And then of course, if you want um, more details, if you wanna go more in depth, I, like I said, I have this whole course and in the course I go into uh, morning time plans, choosing curriculum, how to set up your kids for independent work, how to create weekly rhythms in your home, how to reverse plan your homeschool year around your family's calendar, how to consolidate subjects for multiple kids, and um, just all kinds of details about planning and family culture and homeschool vision. But in today's episode, I'm just going to walk through the portion of the course where I teach how to set up your core curriculum plan and budget and how to cast a vision for your family, which I feel like might be the most important part. <laughs> so let's dive in. Uh, the metaphor I use in the workshop and today is the metaphor of an airplane. We're going to call it airplane planning. I imagine that if you were a pilot, when you would get ready to fly a plane, you would need to know where you're going you would need to have a plan for how to get there. At some point, you would take off and eventually put things on autopilot. And then throughout the journey, you would flex, change courses needed, monitor what's going on, make adjustments. And I just think that is exactly what a homeschool year consists of. You want to have a vision for your family, for your culture. You want to know where you're going. Um, you will not have a peaceful homeschooling experience if you are constantly inundated with um, ideas and resources and different voices and feeding the fears of, I don't think I'm doing enough. I think we might need to be doing this. I think we might need to be doing that. Um, really, to anchor your family's learning environment, you just need to think about where you are going, where your children are right now, what your family's season of life is, what's coming up for your family, um, and where you're going this year. And it's helpful to have a big picture vision of where you're going too. You know, what do you want big picture for homeschool and your kids' education? But that's kind of overwhelming, I think, especially at the beginning. And so I think in terms of catching a vision, um, you'll just want to start reading books, listening to podcasts. A couple of my favorite homeschool podcasts are The Arts of Language with Andrew Pudua, the founder of IEW. He just, I have learned so much from him about teaching language arts effectively and raising great thinkers and communicators and writers. And I've learned a lot about just being a teacher. He's a really great teacher. And so um, I highly recommend that podcast. I love Read Aloud Revival with Sarah McKenzie. Um, and I know there's a lot of other great ones too. I, I actually don't spend a ton of time listening to podcasts these days, um, but there's so many good ones. Uh, Your Morning Basket with Pam Barnhill comes to mind. Humility and Doxology. Um, Amy is the host there. So I would say uh, get some great books, put some podcasts on your doc if you need help casting a vision, right, for your family. Um, but in the meantime, you can think about, okay, where am I going this year? You know, what ages are my kids? Just where are we at in life? Um, and then you're going to make a plan for how to get there. And that's what this episode is about. I'm going to walk you through your core curriculum plan. And then if you want more details on setting up plans for all the other subjects, uh, history, science, literature, all the things, then uh, you could do the full course. And then we're going to put it on autopilot. Autopilot is a whole session in my full course, but I'll just touch on it today because um, autopilot is like such a gift to your homeschool life. So we'll touch a little bit on autopilot and then you're going to need to flex and change course 
during your route as needed, right? Maybe you start something and your kid picks it up way faster than you expected. Well, don't keep trudging through it, making them do something they already know. You're gonna need to change course and jump ahead. Or maybe it takes them way longer than you expected. And you're like, we need more practice than I thought. Um, I'm dealing with that right now. My fourth child has been the slowest to learn to read. And fortunately I am, you know, he's not my first, so I'm not worried about it in the slightest. He just needs more practice. So I had to get some extra books because he just needs more practice than I realized or than I expected, right? So that's just changing course as needed throughout the year. Uh, maybe something will come up, some big family crisis or cool opportunity. And so you're like, hey, we need to shift gears and take advantage of this, or we need to shift gears and put things on pause because we have to deal with this. So we're gonna set up a system that you can flex as needed. And this is um, something I really love to help people do. Okay, first off, know where you're going. I talked a little bit about books and podcasts. Those are important. Those are helpful. As a new homeschooling parent, I just devoured homeschooling books. I was like, what are we doing? What is going on? How are we gonna educate our kids at home? How am I going to learn how to do this? So that can be very helpful. But the other thing I really wanna encourage you to do is to think and pray. I, at the beginning of going into planning mode in the spring, maybe summer, maybe you're a last minute person and your planning mode is in the fall right before you start school, or maybe it's at the end of a calendar year and you restart at the beginning of the next year. But whenever you're going into homeschool planning mode, um, I set aside one morning of prayer time specific to the year. I open a blank journal page. I look up some scripture that I want to pray over my kids for their future. Um, I just surrender all of my plans and hopes and dreams and kind of acknowledge to the Lord the things that I want um, and then just lay them out and try to be open handed and in my heart with what his plans might be. Um, I love the verse that says, commit, let's see, commit your plans to the Lord and your work will be established. And there's another one that says the heart of man plans his, um, I think it says the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. It might be plans his path. But the idea is, you know, we can make these plans, but how they shake out the actual steps could be directed by the Lord. And so I do just spend you know, one whole morning of my prayer, quiet time, Bible time, just really um, praying over our homeschool year. And then I get a blank notebook, <laughs> a really fancy system, and I note in my phone. I do both, a notebook and a note app. And just, I just sit there and I wait for things to come to mind. And um, I'm amazed at what, if I'm just sitting in the silence with an open mind, what the Lord will bring to mind for my kids. Um, Maybe it's an impression about somebody that needs specific help in something. Maybe it's a strength. Maybe it's a gift or a talent that I've kind of noticed but not had capacity to like think about how to foster. Um, it could be the most random thing. Sometimes something will come to mind that I heard about months ago, like a book or a resource or a course. And it'll just come to my mind when I'm sitting in the silence waiting and I'll just jot it down. And then, you know, because I don't have like hours and hours to sit there and plan all at once, I just keep that journal page and that note kind of available um, so that throughout my days and weeks when I'm in homeschool planning mode, if a random idea comes to mind or, you know, I'm talking with one of the kids and they bring up something they're interested in, we I just write it down. So I end up with this kind of notebook page, note app with like all these random bullet points and notes and lists and websites and resources. And I just use that then when I go to fill in um, the curriculum plans, I am kind of looking through those things and thinking, okay, is there anything here that I can utilize, you know, when I'm applying? So that's the first thing that I do is I think and I pray both in a specific time and then kind of without ceasing in an ongoing way. I'm just thinking about planning in the background of my normal life, <laughs> um, noticing, you know, as we're winding down the school year, what, where everybody's at, what was going well, what isn't going well. Um, and then I usually make notes for each of my kids. I just write their names out. Um, and I think through, you know, what are their strengths? Where are there things that they need to work on? Um, and that could be academic, or it could be life skills, or it could be character things. Um, and I, you know, I try to spend 
I think it's so easy as homeschool moms to feel like we need to like do more and more and more and like hurry up and get there. But I, I also try to spend time thinking through, you know, what progress they've made and things like that. So I kind of just journal and write out for a little bit about each kid. And, um, and then I think through where they're at and what the next thing is. So any notes that come to mind about my kids, I just write them down, if that makes sense. Um, a couple years ago, I heard on the Read Aloud Bible podcast, Sarah McKenzie talked about using know, do, and love as kind of a structure for planning. And I really like that. So for each kid, what do I want them to know, do, and love? And maybe that's, you could speak generally about your kids too. You know, as a family, what are we going to study this year? What do we want to know, do, and love? So maybe some topics of interest that we want to learn about, maybe a history time period, maybe a specific science thing, or like my kids are just begging for us to get chickens. So we've got a chickens book that we're reading together right now. That would all be under the umbrella of what do we want to know? Um, what do we want kids to do? That might be more skills based, um, write in cursive, spell words learn to write a great sentence, learn the multiplication facts up through times tens. You know, these might um, also be life skills. I want my child to be able to do their own laundry this year, help make lunch, take ownership over one household responsibility, um, become more independent in such and such a thing, you know? And so then I just focused on, I mean, you can brain dump a whole bunch of ideas for your kids for no do and love, but you're going to want to zero in, right? You're not going to want to like tackle all those things at once. All your math facts, writing all your sentences and becoming independent of laundry and doing lunch. <laughs> that would be very overwhelming. So it's fine to, in planning mode, list them all out. But when we go to actually applying our plan, we're going to want to hone in on a smaller number of things. Um, and then no do love. What do I want my kids to love? This is arguably the most important piece of planning, but um, this might have to do with ordering their affections. So I want my kids to love God. I want my kids to love God's word. I want my kids to love reading and each other. And um, maybe they have a particular passion. So I want to foster, you know, opportunities for them to pursue this thing that they innately, instinctively love, whether that's music or basketball or whatever the thing is. Um, so you can kind of interpret those words however you'd like, but I think they provide a good framework for this kind of brain dump journaling session. And you might do this over a couple mornings or a couple afternoons, you know, with a cup of coffee or tea and just kind of think through um, some of these big picture questions. So that is the first thing I do when I'm planning my year. I spend some time reflecting, writing, thinking, praying, um, writing down all the ideas. And then that leads me to begin making a plan. So in my course, this is a separate video. Um, but for the sake of a podcast episode, I'm just going to carry on. So the second step here is to make our plan, right? We're going to fly our plane. We got to know where we're going. We need to make a plan for how to get there. So once I have already spent some time writing, journaling, which again, if you're in the course, I would say that's your first homework assignment to just take a couple days uh, this week and spend some time writing and reflecting and thinking about your upcoming year. But pretend you already have all that written down and now you can open up your note, notes app and your notebook pages and make an actual plan and make it really practical. So here's what I do for that section. This is so ridiculously simple. I feel like almost silly sharing it with you because <laughs> there is no expensive homeschool planner that I um, use. There is no lesson plan or teacher planner. I literally just make this little chart. And if you can picture a blank piece of paper, on the left side of the chart, I write reading, writing, math, other, and across the top of the chart, I write all my kids' names, and they each get a column. So I have four columns, because I have four kids. And then that ends up creating these boxes. So each child has a box for reading, writing, math, other. And I just start filling them in. And I'm a pen and paper person for brainstorming. I brainstorm well on pen and paper. So I always do this with a pencil and a blank sheet of notebook paper or in my bullet journal. I'm kind of a bullet journal person. Um, 
And then I just fill it in with what I know, where we left off from last year, and what I think we're going to use. Um, oftentimes, math is the easiest because we're just going to pick up where we left off. Now we all use Beast Academy. I don't even order curriculum. We just have an annual membership for each of the kids, and it's on autopilot. They love doing it, so they're going to do it all summer because they ask to do it. Um, when I was ordering math curriculum, you know, I would just say, oh, looks like we're almost done with grade two. I'm sure we'll finish that sometime soon. Better order grade three. Um, if you're switching math curriculums, you know, you might be more penciling in. I, I think I'm going to look into this. Or you might make a note, I need this kid to take a placement test to see where they're going to place. Um, or if you have a child who's really struggling, you know, maybe you're going to pause a comprehensive math curriculum and just hone in on a particular skill and say, you know, we're just going to work on our addition facts, um, something like that. So I fill in the things that I know first that are easy. The next handwriting grade level, um, you know, if if it's a we sort of um, alternate on and off doing IEW. I don't do every single level every single year. So if it's going to be an IEW year, I kind of peruse their website and pick out which one of those we're going to do. Um, and then I just leave blank what I'm not sure about. So I make this chart and I fill in the boxes that I know and I leave the other ones blank. And then when I have time, I, you know, sit on my website, excuse me, on my computer and I do some researching and I try to fill in the other boxes. And I love these boxes and I love labeling them reading, writing, math, other, because it really forces you to simplify and think through and not um, overwhelm yourself and your kids with too many things. I think in our age of homeschooling, it is a gift that there are so many wonderful resources, um, but it would be easy to pile them on and either purchase them all and not use them and feel like, it was a waste, or why did I do that? Or where is that file? I purchased that thing randomly and I, now I can't find it. Or to get sucked into this trap of thinking that we need one more resource to teach what we're trying to teach. I think that I see that all the time. I feel that all the time. Like I see these amazing unit studies that people put together that are so beautiful. And I think we need that, you know, and those are great. Buy a beautiful unit study, study snails or turtles or <laughs> whatever it is, autumn. Um, but when I go to make my core curriculum plan and I just see it laid out, each of the kids reading, writing, math, other, it really forces me to simplify and ask, how are we going to work on writing? Um, and what couple resources am I going to use for that? And then I can kind of feel confident that I don't need to keep piling other things on in this fear of like, I didn't cover my basis, you know, I didn't, oh no, we're not doing enough. It's like, wait, 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 back up. Enough for what? I've spent a couple days writing, thinking, praying about my kids. I've got my basic chart. I've filled it in. We're good, you know, and maybe I'll substitute something out. We do that. I love variety. My kids love variety. Um, we are not the people who do the exact same handwriting book five days a week, 180 days in a row during the school year. I just think that's boring with almost everything in life, except for maybe your Bible and a daily diary. Um, with So I'm, I love variety, but, you know, I like planning ahead, too, and saying, okay, we're going to use, you know, this handwriting book and this scripture copy book, and we're going to kind of alternate or, you know, this year I had my older child working independently on IEW two days a week, structure and style class that they offer on the computer. Um, you know, set up for a four day week, but we just did two and we did it at half the pace. And the other two days she worked on um, of school, she worked on copying out. She picked something that she wanted to copy the whole thing into a notebook. She picked the book of Ephesians. And so, um, you know, that brings me to my other thing. When I'm going through this, I will sometimes ask my kids, hey, which of these books looks more fun to you for handwriting? Hey, do you want me to order you a handwriting book or would you like to work on copying something that you really are interested in? You know, one of your favorite books or a poetry book or a book of the Bible, um, a, a book that's inspired you. So I often will bring my kids into the conversation. Um, same with reading material. You know, I'll pull up several books that I think look great, appropriate, interesting, might get the kids 
outside their normal reading box of fantasy fiction or Harry Potter or whatever their current reading kick is, um, I'll pull up some other books and say, hey, let me read you these descriptions. Tell me which two sound the most interesting to you. And so I'll just start out the year, you know, with a couple books available to them or something like that. So um, this is where I really force myself on this chart to simplify. And like I said, it's so simple. Blank sheet of paper, make the grid, pencil things in, do a little research. Um, I like having other as one box because again, it forces me to simplify. I'm When I see it this way, I'm less likely to pile 18 different things in other. You know, I'm able to say, we're gonna review our poetry and work on the states and maybe take this like language class, you know, or maybe I'll write a note like in the fall, we're gonna do art class online and in the spring, we're all gonna work on Spanish or something. So um, I just think having it all on one page forces you to not overwhelm yourself with materials and things and things to do. And then the last part of this core curriculum planning that I do, and maybe this would be another day, um, maybe you would skip the handwritten version, the scratch paper version, and just go straight to this. But I make a table on the computer in a Word doc. I literally go to File, Insert Table, and I make a digital version of the table that I wrote out by hand. And so I end up with uh, five rows and five columns, and I fill in the far left column with uh, reading, writing, math, other, and I fill in the top row with my kids' names, and I replicate the handwritten thing on the computer in this table, and I do that because, one, I don't want to lose track of it, and two, I spend some time um, finding those materials and linking them and writing down the price. And this helps me move my budget just to make sure that, again, I'm not going crazy and getting all these things we don't need. It also helps me to have them all linked because, um, you know, at some point I'm going to go to order all this and I just prefer to do that all at once. And this helps me keep track. I might order, um, I order a lot of things from Rainbow Resource is, I think, has the best prices year round. Um, but publishers in the summer, May, June, July often are running sales. And so as I'm linking things, I it helps me then when I'm keeping an ear out in my emails for the sales coming. So if the Good and the Beautiful runs a free shipping sale and I've got my chart and it's all linked and I know we use their handwriting. So I know, hey, I'm gonna order three handwriting books from them. Um, then when they run a sale, I'll go grab those. Or um, Well-Trained Mind runs a sale and uh, for my youngest child, I love Math with Confidence. And so I'm gonna like wait for their sale in June, I think is when they do it, to order Math with Confidence. So basically the linking, it just gives me, um, helps me get set up to do all the purchasing. And I like writing in the prices so I can see it all add up. Again, that helps me to simplify, keep our spending down. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I don't link something. I just make a note like I already have this or we don't need that. Or if it's um, like for my daughter who wanted to copy the book of Ephesians, I just made a note, copy Ephesians, she needs a new notebook. And then I let her pick out a really nice notebook for that. So this is, that's it. It's so simple. It's a Google Doc with a table. You could use a spreadsheet if you want, but I prefer a table. And um, you just write out your columns and your charts. And again, the pictures of this and the templates are all gonna be on the show notes for this. So musicalmemory.com slash podcast, I'll have like all the pictures and templates and things that you can do this um, if you want, or you can go back through and watch the YouTube video if that's easier for you. And then if you want uh, way more details and um, to see more of this in action, the full course, uh, just has a little bit more step-by-step, -step, and then I keep going through all the other things like I talked about. Let's see what they were. In the full course, we talk about uh, consolidating subjects for multiple kids, how to plan for history, science, how to use picture books in your plan, how to reverse plan your homeschool year around your family's calendar, how to set up your kids for independent work, and all these other things. Morning time plans um, and whatnot. Oh, before I sign off, I or before I end this episode, autopilot. I forgot I was going to give you my autopilot hacks. So what I do when I pick curriculum is the autopilot piece of this for us is I 
do not plan anything in terms of what we're going to get done for the day or the week. Instead, and again, I go into more full detail about this in the course, but instead what I do is I think through blocks of time and how many times per week we're going to hit the subjects on average and what days they're going to be. And then um, I just buy these little post-it note tabs. Um, they're kind of thick and they come in different colors and I just tab everybody's books, teacher's manuals, workbooks, handwriting books, math books, um, notebooks. Like if we have a spiral notebook for copy work, we tab that. I just keep the tabs in our school supply bin. We always have post-it tabs and we just put a sticky note in where we leave off. And I don't really worry about getting through a lesson in a certain amount of time or anything like that. So, um, for example, I do writing lessons with my seven and a half year old son on Tuesdays and on his independent list, it says writing lesson with mom for Tuesday. And he's supposed to come find me when he's ready to do that. And then I open our book that walks me through things like, um, sentence, like sentences and compound words and, you know, homophones and onomatopoeias, like all these fun little writing things. And we just sit together for like 10 or 15 minutes and I open the book and I do the lesson for 10 or 15 minutes or it depends on the day and his interest level and what we have going on. And then I move the post-it tab to wherever we leave off. And then I close the book and I put it back on the shelf. And next time we do a writing lesson, I just open it and keep going. Um, we do this for handwriting pages. You know, if my kids have to do two handwriting pages a day, they have a post-it tab, they do their two pages, they close the book, they move the tab. Next time they have handwriting on their work list, they open it up and they do it again. And this is how I plan on autopilot. I do this for our read-alouds. Um, we have read-aloud time. Mostly it's in the mornings. Sometimes it's over lunch. Wherever we left off, we just start reading until I'm done reading that for the day. And then I move the bookmark and then I just close the book and it all works out. I don't, um, there is very little in our homeschool that is planned by the week. I don't ever sit down with all the lessons and write them out and say, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because I used to do that. And I always felt stressed out. Like we were always behind or the day that we were supposed to do the thing, we didn't get to it. And then I had to move it. And then I just realized, who am I writing this for? Who does this help? This doesn't help anyone. Um, we're all, I'm always planning intentionally. I'm always picking activities and resources and um, you know curriculum that I think is beneficial and worthwhile. And so we're just gonna do what we're gonna do in the amount of time or the number of pages, whatever is we set out to do. And then we're gonna move the post-it note and to the next set and do it again the next time. <laughs> So that's my autopilot planning. I, I do have a, um, a little bit more of a planning system for history and morning time. It's a hybrid. It's, um, it is autopilot. It's open and go, setting yourself up for the year, but it's also a little bit planned out and that's in the full course. So there you go. You don't need to write out all the lessons. You can just buy yourself some post-it tabs for $3.99 and make everything um, so much easier on yourself. So I'll close with that, musicalmemory.com. I'll close with that, and I hope this episode was very practical for you as you are going into planning mode for your next school year.